everybody! I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about pancreatitis. So let's jump into it! A quick little review of the patho of this. The pancreas basically starts digesting itself in its own enzymes. It becomes irritated and edematous. And as you can imagine, that causes a lot of pain for the patient. The three big causes, gallstones, so there's a blockage, long-term alcohol abuse, or an infection, either bacterial or viral. Lots of different tests that they will do, lots of different ways that they can diagnose this depending on like the cause, but a pretty common way this is diagnosed is with a CT scan. So what does a patient who has acute pancreatitis look like? Okay, what are their signs and symptoms? They're gonna have severe abdominal pain. So like 10 out of 10 abdominal pain. And now you're thinking, well that can be a lot of things, right? A lot of things can cause 10 out of 10 abdominal pain. Ways we can kind of figure it out that's special. Usually occurs after eating a big meal, after drinking alcohol, they might take antacids to help with it because it's after a big meal, so they think, oh, antacid, but the antacid does nothing. Or even vomiting. Sometimes when we vomit, it actually makes things feel better. In this case, it's not gonna help. So very, very painful. They'll have nausea and vomiting associated with it. If it's infectious in nature, so if the cause is an infection, they might have a fever accompanying. They'll have abdominal distension. So when you palpate on their abdomen, it's gonna be firm and round, and they'll probably jump. Even if you lightly palpate, you're very gentle, they'll probably, whoo, you know, they'll probably jump because it's gonna hurt. Jaundice later on. Uh, if we let it get too far, confusion and agitation can occur. And then Turner sign and Cullen sign. Those aren't ones we talk about very often. So Turner sign is ecchymosis, so bruising in the flanks. And then Cullen sign is like a bluish discoloration of the periumbilical area. So those would be definitely very special things you would notice on our acute pancreatitis patient. Now let's talk about all the labs we're gonna draw on these patients. Remember, these patients are very acutely ill. So what are we gonna see? We're gonna see an increase in their serum amylase. This is gonna go up really fast within that first 12 hours, but it only stays elevated for about four days. Their lipase, however, elevates much slower, but stays elevated much longer. So this will last for around two weeks. They'll have an increase in their white blood cell count, either because of you know, the stress on the body of being so acutely ill, or if they have infection, as their uh, cause. We'll have a decrease in platelets, a decrease in calcium and magnesium, an increase in then our liver enzymes, our AST and our ALT, an increase in our bilirubin, which leads to jaundice, right? And then an increase in our glucose. And why is that happening? because the pancreas is not able to do its job very well, right? It's sick, it can't work, it's not working properly, it's not functioning well. So we have poor insulin production happening, which causes an increase in our glucose levels. And that is one of the things we're gonna to wanna to monitor in our nursing care. So let's talk about our nursing care. Now let's talk nursing care. Now there are a lot of treatments associated with acute pancreatitis, like putting in stents and breaking up gallstones and things like that, but a lot of that is really the doctor's job. So I didn't wanna focus on those treatments, I wanted to focus on what does the nurse do? What's the nurse's role in caring for these patients? So what does the nurse do? These patients are probably gonna be NPO and possibly put on TPN. They're gonna have an NG tube placed and that's gonna help with gastric decompression. They're gonna be on bed rest and it's recommended that they stay in the semi fowler's position because that kind of helps with like the pressure on their diaphragm. We're gonna weigh them daily, monitor their ABGs, their glucose and their INO. We're gonna give blood and or blood products if they are showing signs of hypovolemic shock. And remember back to the labs, low platelets is a common lab we will see. So we might give platelets. Refer 
refer to AA when appropriate. So if they're here, they have acute pancreatitis and the cause was that long-term alcohol abuse, we can't just treat them, make them feel better and then send them home, right? We gotta address that alcohol problem. So making appropriate referrals. And then finally, we're gonna give meds as ordered. And there are a lot of meds with these patients. So let's talk about those. Anticholinergics will be given. The point of these is to decrease GI motilities, to, so to help with that nausea, vomiting, and also to help decrease some of those pancreatic enzymes. Spasmolytics, those are like, um, they relax smooth muscle, so that's gonna help with the pain. Pancreatic enzymes, so like replacement, usually this is when they're ready to start eating again, and we recommend to give these with meals. Antianemics, obviously we can't just say, oh, you're nauseous and vomiting. Okay, well let's ignore that and focus on your pain. We gotta give that something for that too, right? So we gotta help them out with their nausea and vomiting. Antibiotics, usually if this is an infectious cause or they even suspect it, they're gonna give an antibiotic. IV fluids, so they're gonna be on fluid replacement. Think about all the fluid that they're losing, right? So we definitely need to replace that fluid. H2 antagonists, so an example of this would be like a Zantac. And if they can't have this for some reason, they can't handle an H2 antagonist, then we'll give a PPI, which is a proton pump inhibitor. So lots of meds for acute pancreatitis. So being familiar with what these are and why we're giving them is really important. One other type of med, I didn't put it on the list, but I really wanted to make sure I mentioned it in this video is the pain meds, right? Because they are in so much pain. They are in severe pain. So of course, we're gonna give them some pretty hardcore meds. We're gonna give them morphine. Very commonly, we give morphine. You can get fentanyl, you could give Dilaudid. So pretty hardcore meds we're gonna give to help deal with these patients' pain. And I also wanted to talk about chronic pancreatitis and how it's a little bit different. There's lots of similarities to acute pancreatitis, but there are a couple things that are a little bit different. The first of which is to be chronic, remember, you have to last longer than six months. So a chronic pancreatitis patient has had this for longer than six months. And a couple other things that are different, causes. So remember our three main causes were gallstones, alcohol, and infection for our acute pancreatitis. When it comes to chronic, the causes are long-term alcohol abuse, and this is what you will most commonly see if you are you know, in the United States, if you live in like the Western world, it's probably gonna be chronic alcohol abuse. In other parts of the world though, the cause will be malnutrition. And some signs and symptoms, they're gonna be a little bit different, right? They're still gonna have that severe abdominal pain, right? But now they're gonna have recurring attacks of that severe abdominal pain. They will still be unrelieved with antacids and vomiting and all of that. Large doses of pain medications, so like our morphine and whatnot, that's not really gonna to help too much, okay? It's not gonna to touch this pain. So these patients are in a ton of pain they will have significant weight loss. I believe this statistic is like over 80% of chronic pancreatitis patients have significant weight loss. Anorexia, and they will develop this because they're afraid. They're afraid of eating because what causes these attacks? Eating, right? It happens after eating a large meal or if you're in the chronic stage, it could happen after eating any meal or drinking any kind of alcohol, right? So anorexia is quite common because of the fear, a fear that a new attack will occur if they eat something. Of course, vomiting. And then the other thing that I wanted to point out that happens in chronic pancreatitis is they will report frequent, frothy, foul smelling, and floating stools. And if you remember, a floating stool does that because it's high in fat content. So this is chronic pancreatitis, just a little things that are a little bit different than acute, I wanted to point that out. So that was my video on pancreatitis. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.